A special thank you to our main sponsor of the channel, Squarespace. More on that later in the video. Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Ellen and welcome to this week's video. This week I thought it'd be really fun to take a look at some rare plants that are now in garden centres. I don't know you might be thinking, right, okay, that's been happening for ages, but I haven't really done any videos on it and it might be really cool periodically to do one, just to have a little bit of a chat really about what I'm seeing at my end here in the UK. Things that used to be a lot rare, things that I used to sell at this shop for a lot more money, and things that are now passing their way down to garden centres. I also want to talk about some garden center plants that I do still sell in this shop and strangely enough they're still holding their value. So I want to talk about all that today, I'm going to show you some pictures of the plants and I'm going to tell you what I think and why for each plant. So if that interests you at all then please keep on watching. Right, so super quick disclaimer, I know I do this all the time on like every video ever, but when I say that they're in garden centres, I am in the UK. If you cannot tell by my accent, I am from the UK. I am in the Lancashire slash Manchester area of the UK. So when I talk about plant prices, yes, they may be different in other parts of the world. But again, this is the really cool thing about these videos. It allows you to see what's going on over here in the UK, and we can compare it with, say, for example, the US, and what kind of plants you've got there, because no doubt you've got stuff in garden centres that we don't even have yet, and we're scrambling to get. So the plants that I've picked to be classed as affordable are between the £5 and £20 range. Now this depends on the plant size. You can get a really small tissue cultured plant for maybe £5 and then if you get it a little bit larger it might be £20. But I've kind of grouped it in that range because not every shop is doing just small plants. There are a little bit of a range there with sizes so that's what I'm going to talk about when I talk about affordability. Obviously you can get house plants cheaper than this. Of course you can. But for these specific plants, I would class these as, you know, they were rare. Now they're kind of definitely bridging into affordable now. The first plant I'd like to talk about is, I think I've still got some here. I don't know where it is. I know I've definitely got some growing in my bio, but the first plant I'd like to talk about is quite a nice one. This is Epipremnum penatum variegata. So it's variegated Epipremnum penatum. I don't think a lot of people realize how pretty these get when they get mature. Now, when they're young, they don't really look like much. I'm going to be honest, they don't. They just, they look like a variegated vining thing, right? But you really need to see, and I really hope I haven't just deleted the picture literally yesterday, of immature Epipremnum penatum, because they're very, very, very nice plants. They're kind of monstera-ish, so they have a lot of fenestrations, and they can get really quite large. And I don't think a lot of people know that. When you see them in garden centres, we're probably talking maybe four or five leaves that are maybe about three inches long for that price. So if I say, 10 pounds in a UK garden centre, that's probably what you're going to get. So you're not going to get a big plant, you're not going to get something that's vining, that's fenestrating or anything else. But I wanted to point this out to you because I don't think many people are aware of how cool they actually go. And if you grow them quite large, I honestly think there'd be quite a good market for them if you're selling them. So if that's something you're interested in, then I would absolutely give the Epipremnum Panatum Variegata a go. That's a really hard thing to say really quickly. Epipremnum penatum variegata, epipremnum penatum variegata, epipremnum penatum variegata. <sighs> the next plant is probably no surprise to anybody at all, and I know this has been here a while, but I wanted to mention it anyway, just to give you an update. The next plant that is available in garden centers that used to be rare is the philodendron pink princess. Now, I wanted to talk about it because this plant has had the biggest journey Ever. It's been tissue cultured for quite a long time. And I know, and this is a popular thing throughout this video, obviously, all these plants are produced from tissue culture. That's why you can get them affordable. A lot of people have a problem with tissue culture. I don't really know why, because most plants in most garden centers ever of any variety, trust me guys, they're from tissue culture. So for the people that don't like tissue culture and are perhaps wanting plants that are, oh, I want this just propagated normally, or I want it from seed. You've been buying tissue culture plants probably all of your life. If you've ever bought from a plant shop, or a garden center or anything like that. But do you remember any point where this plant was expensive, but do you remember specifically COVID? COVID was grim. I'm pretty sure I saw mature specimens of these plants. So maybe, I don't know, two feet tall, maybe even a foot tall for about $600 at times. I'm sure, was it Costa Farms had some as well? They're really, really expensive. Now don't get me wrong, everything in COVID just got stupid, but it's kind of wild to see them that expensive in COVID. And then a couple of years later, they're all just in garden centers. And you can buy them now for about 10 UK pounds. The variegation, mm, I, d I don't really want to comment too much on the variegation you'll find. Personally, I haven't seen brilliant variegation in them, but I don't necessarily think the variegation works in the way that we would expect 
from a pink princess. So you can get them, but I can't really attest to the quality of them. I'm sure they're absolutely fine hardiness wise. It's more just the variegation I'm talking about. So if you have some garden center pink princesses, let me know how they are. Let me know if they're variegated. Still a nice plant. I do like the plant. I have a quite pretty one that you're probably seeing a photograph of now because I just took the photograph this morning. It is quite nice, but it's nice because it has a lot of pink. Do you know what I mean? I don't hate the plant. I don't really like the way it grows. I think you really do have to get a pretty specimen to really appreciate this plant. If you get something leggy and not very variegated, then I don't think it serves your pink fix. If you want something pink, I think you could do better. But for £10 in a shop, if you want to give it a go and you were someone that wanted a pink princess during COVID, literally now is your time. Now is your time. The next plant is not an aroid, but I saw it actually, when did I say this? A while ago. It might have been on Instagram or something. I, saying, I think I saw it in a plant shop and I was like, oh my gosh, finally. And it was a matter of time. But the next plant I'd like to talk to you about very quickly is the Maranta Silver Band. Again, victim of COVID pricing, but even prior to COVID, these things were always expensive because you couldn't really get them. They were actually quite rare. I don't feel like I need to hesitate to use the term rare there. I do think they were hard to get generally. Obviously in some parts of the world they're easier than others and blah 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 blah. blah. But in COVID I think I'm, I might have bought two different cuttings. So this is in 2020 now and I'm sure as hell I won one off eBay and I'm sure it came to about 450 pounds or something for like a two, two, three leaf cutting. It was a little bit insane. That was a lot of money. Have I made any money back on that? No, absolutely not. Basically all I did was I grew it out. But if you're a collector of Maranta, in the UK, I'm pleased to tell you they are around in garden centers. So don't spend a ton of money on them because they are around. I also saw, sidetrack, I also saw the Maranta Lemon Lime as well in the UK. Now, they've been creeping into the UK for a little bit longer than what the Silver Band has. But for the longest time, my UK fellow Maranta lovers will know that it was a little bit difficult to get lemon and lime. Again, I bought lemon and lime off, I think it was Facebook auction perhaps, and that was about £100 that I paid for that because I know they're everywhere in Europe, but it's taken a long time for them to get here. So there's two more plants that admittedly aren't aroids, but if you are a fan of Maranta or Calathea or anything like that, anything of the prayer plant variety, then they might be something you might want to look for. If you're waiting for the time to buy it, literally, the time is now. If you're looking for a fast and reliable way to create and run your own website, you should give Squarespace a try. Squarespace is an all-in-one solution for creating your own website from scratch using a variety of modern and sleek templates. They're really customizable so you can have a website that's unique to your brand in no time. I've used Squarespace now for well over a year for the Red Plant Shop and it's working really, really well for me. If you don't quite know where to start, you can always use the inbuilt wizard which will guide you towards the recommended templates for the kind of website you would like to make. Once you have your selected template, follow the instructions on screen and you'll be set up in no time. If you want to create a really sleek looking website, either for an online store or maybe you're working on your own blog, check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Kaylee Ellen to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you very much, Squarespace. And back to the video. Ah, the next plant. The next plant has been, oh, it's been sold to death, sold to death. I'm slightly surprised to see it in garden centers, but not fully surprised. I don't think it's a hundred percent hardy enough to be in garden centers, but perhaps if they've used tissue culture stock, which obviously they have, then maybe they've got some really hardy ones and they're doing fine. But the next plant I'd like to talk about very briefly is the Anthurium crystallinum. Now I have talked about this plant a lot. I think I've said a few times, like, listen, don't invest in this anymore. It's not good. It's everywhere. I've got that thing coming out of my ears in this shop. I think I will have a sale on soon. Literally nearly every shelf at the top that I forget about, there's crystalline in there. It just, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's like a plague. However, I always recommend crystallinum to people that want to try a velvety anthurium, but are a little bit scared to drop the cash. So you like the look of, say, I don't know, anthurium regal or something like that. And you think, ooh, I really don't want to drop that cash honestly go for crystallinum. Now, what did I see them listed for? Around about 15 pounds. I can't remember the size of that. I think that was a little bit larger. And I'm sure you can get really small tissue culture ones that are literally in like a nine centimeter pot or less. I'm sure you can get them for less than 10 pounds. They are babies from most of what I've seen. There are some shops doing bigger ones, but you can get some really nice quality ones now for not a lot of money at all. So if you've waited to try these, again, I urge you to. I have an absolutely huge one, and I mean a huge one upstairs. I think it's got four or five leaves 
leaves and the leaves are as big as my torso. I've had that since I think some point in 2019 when I first ever had crystallinum. I took one from the batch and I kept it and that's the same one. But it is a really, really nice plant. And honestly, if you think you're on the fence about them, go and look for a mature one on Instagram or online and you will honestly, you will get it. You will get it. So for the value for money and how quickly they size up as well, they're really, really good. I would totally give one of those a go if you're thinking about something velvety and a little bit more bougie. The next plant I'd like to talk about, I might have some here, but it's the Philodendron White Wizard. Not to be confused with the Philodendron White Knight. Now the difference between the Philodendron White Knight and the Philodendron White Wizard is essentially Philodendron White Wizard, to my knowledge, has all green stems and it has white in the plant. The Philodendron White Knight has like a rhubarb pinky stem and the same white variegation applies. Personally, I think the White Wizard is a little bit prettier than the White Knight. I don't know, I guess I just don't dig the rhubarb so much, but that's basically the difference. There are also things like, is it White Princess or something like that in shops? It's all kind of a muchness, to be honest. So I've mentioned the White Wizard, but it kind of applies to a few things. So if you're looking for some slight variations, there probably is some. But the White Wizard is a really, really nice plant, and I sold them, ooh, not really 2020. I think it was more 2019 when they were around. They don't grow amazingly, I will say that. They don't size up brilliantly, so if you're going to have one I would really I would really keep up with the feed and the light they're not fantastic if you don't give them optimal conditions they're gonna grow a bit crap like worse than a pink princess I find them a little bit of a nightmare to be honest but but how much did I have them in the shop for literally five to fifteen pounds UK so again that's for a TC plant or it's for a larger plant more established plant and which one you buy in terms of size is completely up to you and if you're confident looking after a baby plant if you're not maybe just spend that little bit more money and get a bigger one Okay, two allocations I've seen, but honestly, I've seen way more than these. So if you want me to do another video on this one, basically doing exactly the same thing as I'm doing today, please let me know in the comments, leave a like, and I will do another one because I can't really fit everything into this video. But the two allocations I want to talk about that I've selected to talk about today are two of my favorites. One is, is it the silver or the green? It's the Alocasia Silver Dragon, and I have the Alocasia Black Velvet. So we'll do the Silver Dragon first very quickly. I think the Silver Dragon has been, it's definitely been tissue cultured for a long time, by the way. This is not a new thing. It's not a new thing. When I went to uh, the Netherlands in 2020, it was definitely being tissue cultured because you could get it from suppliers, but it was not easy to get a hold of. Conversely, the Dragon Scale, the green one, that was a little bit easier. But I just found for whatever reason I didn't see the silver dragon as much I don't think it's quite as easy to grow I'm not really sure I feel like the silver dragon grows a little bit better but what I absolutely adore and what I actually recommend over that one is the alocasia black velvet because honestly this is a nice statement plant it's really nice and I love dark foliage and I love contrast and if you like an anthurium type of veiny vibe this is a really nice crossover another amazing thing about the plant is that it's velvety hence the name would suggest it's black hence the name would suggest but it, it kind of has and this is the best way I can describe it the leaves are almost like they have a tire print running through them I know that's really an odd thing to say, but that's basically how they work. They're really, really cool. And I find that they are very, very easy to grow. Now they can get leggy very quickly, but this is an alocasia thing. I've talked about this actually a very long time ago now, very long time ago in a alocasia care video. All alocasia can be very prone to leaning, getting scraggly, to having petioles that don't talk to each other and they argue all the time. They're just, they're not friends, if you know what I mean. It can be a bit of a problem. So I wouldn't really recommend alocasia generally unless you can grow them. Maybe on under like a skylight or in a windowsill or somewhere where they're going to get a little bit more light from above rather than the side if that makes sense so it really depends what you like but if you're looking for a nice alocasia my pick personally would be the black velvet if you're wondering what I would pick if it was me in a garden center I think my mum wants one so I should probably pick one up because I don't really have an excuse now because they're in garden centers. Both Silver Dragon and Black Velvet, I've got them down in UK pounds from like five, six pounds to basically 20 pounds, depending on the size. With stuff like this, when things get really cheap, a lot of times you can have multiple plants in the pot. Honestly, that is absolutely not unheard of. So if you can, maybe go in person to get one because you might actually get more for your money. If not, buying online, I'm sure is absolutely fine. But just be aware with anything like this, you can get multiple in the pot, which I'm sure you're no stranger to if you buy plants generally. 
So those are a selection of plants that are now readily available in shops. Now I want to talk about four more plants really that are available in shops but they've held their value and they, they're not quite as forthcoming and I find it really interesting because literally every single one of these is probably tissue cultured. Definitely the first two I'm going to talk about. Pretty strong that the third is as well and the fourth maybe less so because it's very good. So when you tissue culture variegated plants, it can be done, by the way. A lot of people say, well, can you tissue culture a variegated plant? Yes, but it's not guaranteed that the variegation is going to pass to everything. So if you do it, I call it, you know, doing it by brute force. So you have to pick out the variegates if there are any. Otherwise you get all green. So that's that anyway. But the first plant, and I, I love this plant so much, but the first plant I want to talk about that is in garden centers, it is in plant shops, it's not there all the time, and it does the rounds every single spring. And if you can get one, honestly, it is worth the money. And I say it's worth the money because they don't really come round much after that, they kind of disappear. So if you want one, it's not one rule for all, obviously, but certainly in the UK at least, you've kind of got a window of opportunity to buy one, and then you're kind of stuck a little bit and then you've got to go private. The first plant I want to talk about is the Philodendron Florida Ghost. Now literally, literally, everyone knows how much I love this plant. My plant, I think it might have died, you know, you know the big one I had. I'm going to have to get another one. If you've seen my Instagram, you'll know it's actually that way in the shop. I do have a little one that's vining and it's growing just literally off a shelf. It's just kind of rogue. So I'll probably propagate that and grow it larger. Give it some of my feed because I think that'll definitely size it up. If you can, if you can, get a Florida ghost. Now what I have seen in shops, they can come in tissue culture sizes, right? And I'm not knocking that. I just find personally, they take a while to get going Florida ghosts. The leaf shape is really nice when they go from, you know, immature to mature. So when you see one in tissue culture, hopefully I might have a picture for you. The leaves aren't really anything. They're just kind of like, eh. but when they get older, they turn into these cute little, literally like a cartoon ghost. And then they get much bigger and they turn into the same kind of thing that you'd get from a Florida beauty. There's lovely, lovely variation on the shape of these plants. So if you want to get a younger one for very little money and you just, you're quite happy to work on it, then go for it. You can get a really good deal. Literally, do I have a price? No, I don't, but I suspect it's exactly the same as the other things. So somewhere, you know, between like 10 pounds, something like that, UK money, and you can get a small one. Now the large ones, the large ones. The large ones are more money. Sometimes I've seen them for 80 pounds UK. When I say large, by the way, I mean maybe two feet tall. So six inch pot, something like that, maybe a little bit bigger. So I've seen them for around about 80 pounds in some places. And a lot of places I've seen them for 150 pounds. Now that's steep. That is steep. 150 pounds will get you a very big, pretty one though. I will not knock it. Like it's Instagram ready. It's good to go. It's bushy. It's beautiful. But I think they're that price because I told you, I'll tell you what I think. I think they're that price because of the fact they take ages to grow and ages to size up. And they're kind of, they're quite annoying really to get going. Really for you, it depends whether you want to wait that long. If you're happy to honestly get one of these things as babies, get a few in case one dies. Cause I would in this situation, if you're going to get a baby, at least get two in case one dies because you might find it a struggle to get another one at a different time of the year. Of course, you will be able to get one from a private seller. That's just how it is. It will be a cutting most likely, but it's up to you. Now, I think they've held their value for that reason. I think that they, they just take a while to get going, really. In terms of the seasonal thing, I... I Guys, I don't know. I don't know why they do that. I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe all these tissue culture factories have different like rollouts for like Q1. We roll these plants out. Q2, Q3. I, I don't really know. I do not get it, to be honest. I don't get it. It makes no sense to me. But for whatever reason, and I've said this before, they just seem to come out in spring just seem to come out in spring. So do with that information what you will. And I'm telling you now because spring is coming and you need to look out for them if you want one. But I love them. Still one of my favorite plants. I need to get one in my house and I'm almost willing to take a shortcut of buying a bigger plant to get there because I do love them that much. So Philodendron Florida Ghost. Oh, so pretty. Do recommend. Next plant, the Monstera Thai Constellation. And I've talked about this before. And if you are wanting variegated Monstera, literally I did a video on the Thai versus the Albo a couple of weeks ago. It's right here. I will link that down for you below just in case you are still in the market for a variegated Monstera and you don't know which. Yes, the Thai Constellation is in garden centers. It's in shops. And this one being it's a product of pure tissue culture, that's how it was actually discovered in the first place, I think. I think it was like a, a mutant 
you know, one error, I guess, that someone's decided to tissue culture. Essentially, you can get this plant in nearly any size you want. And I mean that. I mean that, guys. You can get it from like a six inch plantlet. You can get it maybe that tall. You can get it two feet tall. You can get monsters. You're going to be paying a lot for the monsters. Obviously, this is how it works. It's a little bit exponential, really, with the money you pay, but it's the money you want to pay versus the time you have. But that's not a bad thing. That means, technically, you could probably get a Thai constellation for nearly any budget. So if you have more of a budget, you can afford to cut the time down. If you don't, I'm pretty sure you can get a small plant for about £25. And by small, I mean like this tall. So like 12 inches tall, something like that. You can get one for about £25 UK. Now that is a little bit more on the expensive end, but Thai, and I, I've said this in you know the video a couple of weeks ago, they have held their value quite a bit. So it doesn't really surprise me that you can get a small one that is £25. Now, why have they held their value? I think it's I think it's a variety of reasons, guys. I think we had the cost of farms thing that, again, I will not go into. I will let you watch the other video. We had the cost of farms thing. We've had a few things, and I think at some point the Thai probably caught on, and I think they, like, bottlenecked them a little bit, and we did have some problems with quality control, and they haven't got out that quickly. So there's been a few delays, there's been a few bottlenecks, there's been a few gatekeeping issues should we say but they are out in stores now so you will still be paying a price i don't personally think it's going to come down anytime soon to be honest i think we're going to be waiting a bit longer to get it down from that to get it down from like 25 pounds for a small plant to five pounds a year at minimum obviously maybe two i don't think it's going to come down that quick it really depends on how quickly people want to ma manufacture these things i don't really know Ooh, another one, another one that is not, mm, it's not quite in garden centers, guys. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. It's really hit and miss. You'll probably more likely find it online, but it's not to say it won't be found. It's just, it's not great. And honestly, I can probably guess why this isn't kicking around much. It's both hardy and not hardy, and I'll explain what I mean by that in a moment, but it's both hardy and not hardy, and it's difficult to propagate. And that is the philodendron El Choco Red. Now, I've said nothing but good things about this plant. I still think it's a great plant. I just think that it needs to be not really meddled with in any way to stay a good plant. So it can tolerate underwatering and overwatering and stuff like that, right? That's fine. But what it doesn't like is root disturbance. Really, they don't take kindly to it in my experience. In my experience, I'm just a person on the internet. And propagating is a nightmare. Literally, literally. Has anyone tried to propagate these things and had just success every time? I think not. For me, a good day with chocos might be a 50 to 60% success rate, maybe. If, say, if I propagate 10, therefore five to six will, will work, four will fail, for example. Worst case scenario, two will work and eight will fail. So that's kind of your propagation rate. If you're going to propagate these, by the way, really quick note, don't do it without an aerial root. Don't do it without an aerial root. Don't, don't go through the pain. Don't cut it. Honestly, don't cut it. Find a way of getting an aerial root first for those because they're not, they're just not very forthcoming at all. So yeah, I think you can get it. I think it's held its value because it's really hard to propagate. Like the, I would imagine it gives growers a bit of a headache if I'm honest. I don't even see them sold anymore. When I do, and when I have purchased them in from suppliers outside of my own supply, I paid quite a bit of money for them. They've had no root and the quality has not been there. The quality has not been there. I might try and have have another goal. I just don't know if I have to sacrifice my main chocolate red that's in the corner, which does not look great, by the way. I have a couple in the shop, but I don't actually have a lot of chocolate red. So to get them started again is going to be, it's going to be a thing. So I might see about that, but I believe that's why they're holding their value. I think they're a little bit of a headache, but if you get one that's established and you don't, you don't meddle with it in any way. Honestly, they are decent. They really are decent. They'll survive a lot. It's just when you start meddling with them and chopping them that they don't like it. Let's talk about the philodendron variegated burly marks because I'm still kind of surprised that this plant is doing as well as it is still. They, they doubled and now they're back to half. They're about 65 UK pounds roughly for a small plant and that's with decent variegation or whatever. Now, I'm surprised that they've come to that because yes, they're variegated and yes, it's not stable or anything. Yes, they can revert. But if anybody's actually seen a philodendron burly marks, the rate and the way that they grow is a little bit insane, guys. It's a little bit insane. So if you really need to propagate this plant, you shouldn't have much of a problem. They grow in water, they grow in moss, they grow in lacquer, they grow in soil, they literally grow in everything. They're really, really easy. Propagations tend not to fail in my experience at all. They just 
They're fine. Really, really tough plant. I'm kind of surprised it's held its value just due to the way it grows and how easy it is to grow, how easy it is to propagate and everything else. But I do still, and I know I've said this a lot, and I know I will keep saying it till I'm blue in the face, but it's a great beginner plant to learn variegation on because it sort of reproduces itself at a quick rate. It means if you, you know, your plant reverts, you're very, very likely to keep the variegation because you can just keep chopping it and it'll be fine. You can reproduce it, you can do what you need to do. It's just a really, really nice plant, to be honest. When they're young, they, they don't <laughs> they don't look so nice. But when you get them in a nice big bush and they're all nice and variegated, they are very pretty plants, guys. So I think, I'm pretty sure they've held their value and it just, it just surprises me every time. And again, it's just due to the way they grow. I'm still surprised. Now, I don't necessarily see them in garden centers. Sometimes you can get the odd one, but they will make a thing of it. If a garden center has one in, they will make a thing of it. And they'll be like, oh, look, it's a variegated one. Hey, here's the price. So you're probably better off not buying from a garden center or a plant shop or whatever in that respect. If you can get one from an online shop that has them in or you can do it privately, then you might be better. And you can absolutely go for a cutting on these guys because literally, trust me, do not be put off by a tiny little cutting. They will grow like wildfire. That concludes our little discussion about garden center plants, what's here, what's holding its value. The most interesting one to me will always be the Florida ghost because I don't understand why it's seasonal. If anybody knows, please write in the comment why they think it's seasonal. Why is it seasonal, guys? I can't be the only one that's noticed. I can't. But that was this week's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like me to do another one of these, I'm sure I can periodically, or maybe I could do one very soon. I will have a look at what is going on and I will let you know. But that is what's going on in the UK. Let me know if it's the same for where you are. Let me know if it's different. Let me know if you have Florida ghosts all around, all year round. If you do, I'd like to come and live with you because I would love just a whole room of them. If you like this video, please leave a like down below. It lets me know that I do a good job for you making content and you enjoy what I do. If if you'd like to subscribe and you're not already subscribed because 50% of you aren't, I'm watching you. I'm, I'm watching you. Then please feel free to hit that subscribe button. And that is it for this week's video. I will see you in the next one. Bye.